Welcome once again to Grace Baptist Church and Sunday School. Before I uh, get started today, I want to give you uh, a recommendation. I was just able to witness Brother Kenny's devotion, and I'm looking forward uh, in, uh, to viewing uh, Brother Gene's two messages tomorrow. But I just must say that uh, you need to listen to Brother Kenny's devotion. That's one of those uh, that needs to be listened to twice. Outstanding message. I pray that you will listen to what I'm going to be doing. I pray that you will listen to our pastor. Uh, but let me give you a real recommendation to listen to Brother Kenny's devotion from today. We are moving into part four of our study on the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of the God, and today we're going to begin taking a look at the fruit of the Spirit. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Verse 1, we're going to be reading through the first part of verse 3. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, your holiness. In those verses, these saints and you saints are being urged and exhorted as in union with the Lord Jesus to be more and more fruitful in our daily conduct and in pleasing God. Just as they were taught, as we are being taught by Paul and possibly Silvanus and Timothy, from whom this letter came. And this is said with a view to the underlying purpose. The will of God for the saints to be made more holy, separated from sin day by day. To reject that purpose would be the most serious of wrong decisions. Look uh, in that same area down to verse 8 in chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 8, verse, excuse me, Chapter 4, verse 8, 1 Thessalonians. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject humanity, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Notice, after a most stern warning, the verse ends by saying, the God you would reject has also given you his Holy Spirit. If this is true, if God has given you his Holy Spirit, those to whom this letter was written would then and will now hear and perform. And again I say, we'll hear because the letter is, us, is to us today if we are saints of God. The Apostle John also addresses the issue of hearing God's men as God leads them to speak. 1 John 4, 6. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth, and the spirit of error. 
And of course, God's people know the spirit of truth because he dwells in them. The spirit of truth, even the Holy Spirit of God the Father and the spirit of his Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Saints of God, people of God, those who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, we are compelled by God to be more and more fruitful in our daily lives, in our daily behavior, and thereby be more and more pleasing to God. Our sanctification the process whereby we become more and more holy day by day. The process, now listen to this, this is a huge part of sanctification. The process whereby we separate ourselves from sin more and more day by day. To borrow from a verse in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. As we have learned, this process of becoming more and more holy day by day is referred to as progressive sanctification, progressive holiness. Please listen up. This is a battle for your soul. Your flesh and demonic spirits are seeking to destroy you by leading you to sin against God. You must fight daily, hour by hour, minute by minute, to kill the flesh, thereby denying demons that access to your soul. Holiness involves separating yourself from sin. Failure to do so will not allow you to live a life pleasing to God. You must be actively involved in this warfare, as we were taught last week. But don't think this is some self-help lesson. We must also be actively engaged in continual prayer, seeking God to empower us unto enduring to the end while winning these ongoing battles with the flesh and evil spirits. Now this next uh, statement you may have a little trouble with. And when we do lose battles with sin, thanks be to God we have an advocate with the Father. As the Spirit of Christ is our advocate here on earth, so the resurrected Christ is with the Father in heaven and intercedes for us when we sin. And as it was uh, stated by Brother Kenny earlier, I believe, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if God saves you, you are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, and sin shall not have dominion over you, shall not rule over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Romans 6, 14. Under grace. As Christians, we are the blessed among human beings, the beloved, the highly favored ones. God bestows upon us particular graces through his Holy Spirit 
to enable us in the otherwise overwhelming struggle to become more holy in our daily lives. We see some of these graces in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which we will start looking at in greater detail in a moment. But first, let's revisit the works of the flesh with an even more expansive view, because I'm going to add some things today. Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. Today we will begin reading there in verse 19 through verse 21. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Revisiting the works of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh, think about yourself here please. I'm going to think about me. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are... Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelries and the like, remember that, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now I want to borrow from Romans chapter 1, verses 21 through 31, and I'll not read them all, but we're going to see some of uh, the and the like from these works of the flesh in Galatians. We're going to see that in addition uh, from Romans chapter 1. Unrighteousness, wickedness, covetousness, strife, maliciousness, deceit, backbiting, Pride, boasting, disobedient to parents, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Friends, in our flesh, nothing good dwells. Romans 8.13 for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. And that means eternal death. But if by the Spirit, by the Spirit, through the Spirit, by the means of the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live eternally. Now go back in Galatians chapter 5. To verse 16 and we will read verses 16 through 18 and then move to verses 22 through 25 Galatians chapter 5 beginning at verse 16 I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh or the desire of the flesh for the flesh desires against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law now let's move to verse 22 reading through verse 25. <clears throat> but the fruit of the Spirit, the Spirit's fruit, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, 
gentleness or meekness, self-control or temperance. Against such there is no law. And those of Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. It's crucified, folks, but it's not dead yet. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, we will be looking at the fruit of the Spirit by considering the first and key portion, love. The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Romans 5, 5. Here's something that's overwhelmingly interesting to me. I pray it will be interesting to you. Mind opening. Delightful. It is interesting to note that all the following sections of the Spirit's fruit basically derive from or at, or, or at the least are directly linked to love. And may I show you some scriptures as we go through each portion showing you that. Love and joy. Turn to Philemon, verse 7. And of course, that's because there's just one chapter. Philemon, verse 7, right before the book of Hebrews. For we have great joy and consolation or comfort. In your love. Because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. Great joy and comfort in your love. A joy caused by love. Both being produced in the hearts of those saints being exercised thereby. Number two, love and peace. Turn to 2 John, verse 3. Same thing with 2 John as with Philemon. It is but one chapter. 2 John, verse 3. Grace, mercy, Peace will be with you from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. In truth, in love. So again, to use our noggins as the Lord God gives us an understanding they will have peace with one another in their love for one another. That's what peace between you and I stems from. We love one another. As a fruit of the Spirit, you have the Spirit, I have the Spirit. This is how it works. Number three. Love and patience. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4, the first clause begins with, Love suffers long. Suffers long is one word. And it's the word so often used, uh, it's the, the root word for patience, patient, patiently. Love is long-tempered. Remember, these are temperaments and bears with difficult matters. Love is patient. Patience is 
in love. Number four, love and kindness. Right there in the same verse, the first clause ends with love is kind. Love does no harm, no ill to a neighbor. Romans 13, 10. And we will look more at this if God allows us in coming lessons. Number five, love and goodness. Luke, this is a little longer explanation here, but I think it's a good one. Luke 6, 27. Love your enemies. Did you hear that? Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Please remember, we must do the will of God from the heart. Remember Ephesians 6, 6? We referred to that last week. Doing good to your enemies, to those who hate you, must come from a heart of love. You cannot just go through the motions. Doing this because it's the right thing to do and because it's your duty is not pleasing to God. This is where we must ask, seek, knock in prayer that God will fill us with the love of the Spirit to motivate us in doing good. Number six, love and faith. And this was just straightforward. Love and faith, straightforward. Galatians 5, 6 speaks of faith working through love. Faith working by or by the means of love. Plain and clear. Number seven, love and meekness, or maybe a better word here is gentleness. Paul says this to the saints at Corinth, I'm going to read something from there, with whom he had a number of issues to straighten out. In 1 Corinthians 4.21, Paul says, What do you want? Should I come to you with a rod or in love and a spirit of meekness or gentleness? From love, listen up, from love comes a heartfelt gentleness or meekness. And may I add, being meek is not weak, but it is gentle. I'm so glad that the Lord God showed me that because it's absolutely true. Number eight, and lastly, though the message is not over, love and self-control or love and temperance. We have a little longer explanation for this one. Self-control, temperance. This word comes from a word meaning strong in a thing, such as mastery of self. Therefore, self-control. 1 Corinthians 13.5 contains this clause. Love is not provoked. Think about being provoked. The word provoked means incited, stirred up, irritated. This is absolute evidence of self-control, which is found in a heart and mind filled with the love of God. Love from the heart will keep you, it will guard you from being incited or stirred up, provoked to sin. 
Now, as we can see, love is foundational to all the sections of the fruit of the Spirit. And with that in mind, I want to address the truth of Ephesians 6, 6 even further. And remember Ephesians 6, 6, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Turn to Matthew 22, the first gospel, Matthew 22, 37 through 40. <clears throat> Matthew 22, verses 37 through 40. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, <clears throat> and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love with all your heart. Love with all your heart. God the most and people as yourself, which means we love God more than self. Impossible except the Spirit of God enables us. And if you doubt that you must love God more than you love yourself, come, come with me and let us reason together. In Matthew 10, 37, Christ says, He who loves father or mother, son or daughter, more than me is not worthy of me. We are commanded to love others as we love ourselves, but not as much as we love Christ. Therefore, we must love Christ more than we love ourselves. Remember, we cannot go through the motions or perform out of duty. <clears throat> but even worse, love cannot, love must not be faked. There are people who are lovers of themselves, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. 2 Timothy chapter 3, and this is exactly where the pastor was just recently. These folks are fakers. They are not real. As the text says, they deny the power of godliness. And only by the power of God are we enabled to truly love through the Holy Spirit giving us that segment of his fruit, love. Love, the greatest of affections. Even God's love indwells us in the person of the Spirit of the God who is love. Without this, we are nothing. Again, I want to look at uh, 1 Corinthians, that chapter so often, called the, so often called the love chapter, and read verses 1 through 3. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Just a lot of noise. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries 
and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, faith so that I could remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be, be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Romans 13, 8. Owe no one anything except to love one another. For he who loves another has fulfilled the law. Pray without ceasing that God would empower you. Oh, I pray that God would empower me with the Holy Spirit to love as Christ loves. Amen.